Hey folks, Michael Mann from Michael Mann Security Services. Welcome to the Church Security Minute. We're going to talk about intermediate weapons in church security. Hey, if you want to get a hold of us, you can get us a contact at michaelmannsecurityservice.com or you can always get me at 615-956-3912. All right, let's get into it. Intermediate weapons. Basically, here's what intermediate weapons are, folks. These are tools that you can use when empty hand control are not going to be effective or is not going to be effective, but the use of deadly force is not authorized. So it gives this uh, level of force or gives tools that offer an intermediate level of force that fall between the use of a firearm and that empty hand control. Just what I said there. So the classifications of intermediate weapons are going to be oleoresin capsicum or OC, because I don't suggest that you use mace, uh, batons or impact weapons. And those can be straight batons or those can be the collapsible like the Aspen and Adnock. And then, of course, your conducted energy devices or your tasers. Okay. Now, intermediate weapons, we start talking about use of force model. Uh, what's important is you have a use of force model. So if, uh, if you've got a church security ministry, you guys are out there doing safety and security work, even volunteers, good idea in your policies and procedures to have a use of force model for your volunteers. So here's the good thing about intermediate weapons. We talk about your use of force model. One, it, uh, it gives additional options and decisions for uh, your ministry members. So one, the intermediate weapon can, uh, if an adversary or if someone that's going to be resistant sees them, it could create a deterrence. Two, there is risk reduction because, uh, uh, you know, the majority of your intermediate weapons, at least two, are truly considered less lethal. Impact weapons, and we'll talk about that uh, in some other presentation, but, you know, impact weapons, batons can cause serious bodily uh, injury or death where uh, OC or a taser would not, not alone. But there, uh, so, but it does create risk reduction, right? So, especially with the OC and your uh, conducted uh, conducted energy devices, and then of course the mindset. It makes the volunteer feel better because they have another option, something outside of just uh, verbal direction, going straight to hands on, uh, or the use of deadly force. And even if you've, uh, you know, let's say it calls for some sort of empty hand control. If your folks or your ministry is not trained or prepared to do that then they are going to have to escalate to something else. And so, again, uh, this goes into risk reduction and mindset for that volunteer. Okay. Legal considerations. What are the state requirements in the state where you have a security ministry? What does it say about security officers or like volunteers, private citizens? What does it say about compliance and legal, uh, legal ramifications for carrying those intermediate weapons? So what's the law around private citizens and intermediate weapons? Two, training and resources. Most of the time, there's some training required in most states. So what does that mean? How much is that going to cost? Can you do that in-house? Are you going to have to hire that, uh, you know, outside externally because you don't have that talent or you don't have that certification in-house? And then, of course, if you're going to carry intermediate weapons or someone on your ministry is going to do that, make sure that they're, that the liability insurance, look at the liability insurance of the church. Does it cover that? And if it does not, which it may not, uh, then there needs to be some prepaid legal considerations like your self-defense plans. All right. So just things to think about with the intermediate weapons at your security teams. All right. Uh, again, you can contact us at michaelmansecurityservice.com. You can get us 615-956-3912. And remember, folks, it is about prevention, not response.